This is an IGCSE and GCSE physics video on Hertzsprung Russell diagrams. I'm just going to quickly run you through what they show you before I take you through some past paper questions so you can really get to grips with this difficult topic. So, as you can see, this is a diagram. It's known as the Hertzsprung Russell diagram and it crucially shows stars according to their temperature and brightness. So, you need to be prepared to label the x and y axis. Notice the temperature goes on the x axis and is measured in Kelvin. Remember to convert degrees Celsius to Kelvin, you want to add 273. And then on the y axis here we have luminosity. So be prepared to label those and notice which way the axes run. So we're going up in luminosity in this direction and decreasing in luminosity in this direction. The hotter end of the temperature scale is actually where you wouldn't expect it to be on the left hand side and it gets cooler across here. You might also see the y axis described as absolute magnitude. And if you're asked what absolute magnitude is, well, it's a measurement of the brightness of a star at a standard distance. One other thing I wanted to point out is that you could also see on the x-axis colour as opposed to temperature. Remember that the colour of a star indicates its temperature as well. So blue is surprisingly very hot. Obviously these temperatures are all very hot, but the blue is the hottest. And red, bizarrely, is the cooler star. Now, with this video, the, the most useful thing I'm going to do is talk through the past paper questions, but let's just take a cursory look at what's going on. Now, you can see if you know the temperature as well as the luminosity or the absolute magnitude of the star, you can plot their position on this chart. And then by having a brief knowledge of the location of various different star types, so for example, that the red supergiants are situated in the top right corner, if when you plot the star's temperature and brightness and it appears in this area of the graph then you know it's a red supergiant if it's cooler but also very bright it will be a blue giant and then if it features more in this part of the graph we know that it's in the main part of the star's life cycle so it's a main sequence star down here in the left hand side we can see the white dwarf which remember is a small star that's reaching the end of its life so the hertzsprung russell diagram shows the relationship between the absolute magnitude and the color of stars the position of the sun is shown. Star W is a white dwarf. Add a W to the Hertzsprung Russell diagram to show the position of star W. We just talked about this. Remember in that diagram I showed you, the white dwarfs were around here. It's actually quite useful because we've got the color here, white. We know that they're not going to be super bright. So we're going to pop it down here and label it W. You don't have to be super specific here. You're just showing that you recognize the color and that it's not the brightest of stars. Star X is a red giant. Add an X to the hertzsprung russell diagram to show the position of star X. So again, the red giants were around here, which is useful because look, there's red. We know that they're going to be quite bright, so it needs to be up here. We're going to label it X. Star Y is a main sequence star that is much larger than the sun. Add a Y to the Hertzsprung Russell diagram to show the position of star Y. So the main sequence appears over here on an angle. So it needs to be because it's much larger, it needs to feature on this side. So again, not being too fussy with our position here, I'm going to pop it there. Star Z has the same surface temperature as the sun, but would be dimmer than the sun if it was the same distance away from the earth as the sun. So yeah, we're referring to this absolute magnitude here. So it's the same temperature, so it'll be the same colour, but it needs to be dimmer. So let's just put it a bit lower and label that Z. Don't get confused with the axes, by the way. It is brighter up here and it is dimmer down here. The moon is the brightest object in the night sky. Suggests why the moon cannot be shown on a Hertzsprung Russell diagram. Well, the Hertzsprung Russell diagram is all to do with stars. The moon is obviously not a star, it's a satellite, and that the moon's temperature would not register properly on the x axis. It'd be far too cool because it doesn't give out heat energy. The moon is not a star, and the moon is too cool to register on the Hertzsprung Russell diagram. This question is about stars. Astronomers measure the absolute magnitude of stars. State what is meant by the term absolute magnitude. It's worth two marks. Thank goodness we've already talked about that. It's a measurement of the brightness of a star at a standard distance.
The evolution of stars can be shown on a Hertzsprung-Russell diagram. Complete the HR diagram by labelling the x-axis, completing the absolute magnitude scale, drawing the main sequence red giant and white dwarf regions. So remember the y-axis scale is strange in that it goes from positive to negative. So let's just make sure we're evenly spaced there, which is why I'm taking that up to plus 10, followed by plus 15. Let's label the x-axis now, which is the colour of the star. And now we need to draw the main sequence, red giants and white dwarf regions. So let's start with the main sequence, which remember is that diagonal line that's effectively a negative correlation. Then up here we have the red giants. So it is really worth familiarising yourself with that original diagram. And then down here we have the white dwarfs.